I have a tattoo from Auschwitz. They cut our hair, bald, like this. <laughs> I was 14 years old when I went into concentration camp. Your freedom went like that in one second, right? And, and to me, that means everything, to oh. be free. I guess God is good to me. He wants me to tell the story for everybody. Good morning, guys. Today we have the great privilege to meet up with a Holocaust survivor. Lucy Jacobs was at the Auschwitz concentration camp at the age of 14. Lucy has very descriptive and uh, strong accounts of what happened to Auschwitz because she was 14. Very few survivors uh, from that experience are still alive here today to tell their stories. We're gonna meet her, I believe, in her apartment or at least in the waiting room here at this senior assisted living facility. All right, let's do this. Hello. Hi. Hi, come in. Hi, look at you. Hello, Lucy. Hello, hello. Bo. Nice to meet you. Can I shake your hand? Yes. Yeah, sure. All right, my nice pleasure. To nice to meet you. Same here. I have a tattoo from Auschwitz. 16,598. I worked in the kitchen, so I got a tattoo. You don't want to get it removed, or you can't get it removed? I could, but I don't want to. I want to die with this. Why? Because I got it, and it just saved my life, and I'm going to die with it. The number saved your life? When I got the number, I was happy, so they won't send me anymore in the crematorium. Oh, so if you got the number, you didn't get the gas or the crematory? I was working. I was 14 years old when I went into concentration camp with mm -hmm. my mommy and daddy. They separated me from my mommy. My mother went, I had a little sister, 10 mm -hmm. year old. She went with my little sister and I went to the left. And my mommy went to the right, to the gas chamber. And I'm walking, crying, you know, yelling, mommy, wait for me. Little girl. Uh -huh. Mommy turned around, but they were pushing her. They said, Lose, Lose, go, go, go to the crematorium. And I'm walking that street crying between the wires. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know nothing. I got crying after mommy. Comes a guy. Never ever saw him in my life with striped clothes, with the concentration camp clothes. And he says to me, little girl, why are you crying? I said to him, because they pushed me here and my mommy went there and I can't talk to my mommy. So he says to me, don't cry, how old are you? I said, I'm 14. No, 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 promise me, from now on you are 16. I said, but I never lied. Mm -hmm. He said, now you're gonna lie. And I never saw him again. He left. Never again in my life, like an angel. That's my parents. That's my mommy and daddy. And over there on the bottom is my family picture. I'm dear a little girl. I'm right in the middle. I'm still crying, walking, walking, until I wind up with a group of older women. Not old ones, older than me. Mm -hmm. Mature women. That they take away their babies, they give it to their mother, and they went on this side to work, and the mother went to the crematorium with the baby. So if you were 14, you would have went with your mother? Right. So they were holding 16 to what age to do the to work? work? They took us into a big building. Mm -hmm. They cut our hair, bald, like this. <laughs> All of us, mm -hmm. we looked like monkeys. I had long hair down to here. They took away my clothes. They gave us a mumu dress for one fits for all. They took away my shoes, my good shoes, and they gave me a wooden clock. I couldn't walk in it, I almost broke my neck. No warm clothes, no nothing. It was March, and it was cold. I tied up all my clothes because I had double, 
double clothes. My daddy said, put on double. In case they take away one, you have another one. Mm -hmm. My daughter was an animal doctor. We were seven children. Okay. And I'm, and I'm the only one here now alive. The, I had them, survived them. Two brothers and one sister, she was not in concentration camp. She was as a Christian in Budapest. So all your other siblings and your father was also killed at the concentration camp? Auschwitz. Auschwitz. One brother I find when I came home. One brother, he survived Buchenwald. Oh. How long were you in, at Auschwitz for? I was in Auschwitz for two years. Two years. How did you sleep? Like in... Like animals. How? Like all on the floor? No, we had bunks okay. in Auschwitz. Okay. In Auschwitz only, in Bergen-Belden on the floor. In Auschwitz was bunks, wooden bunks, three layers. Uh huh. No mattress, uh -huh. no blanket, sleeping like animals. So every day you were just doing hard work? Every day hard work. First I was digging in water. Okay. We had to turn around the water. It went this way, they wanted to go, to go this way, the water. You were digging like trenches? Yeah, and okay, we were in water. Up and, to our... And you place. had like SS guys above you telling oh, yeah, you to work harder? SS. They watching us, oh yeah, with dogs, with German shepherds. How did they treat you? Terrible. If you didn't do the work what they, you're supposed to, they were beating you. Three crematoriums was going on day and night, the flame. Yeah. And they were burning the humans. Three of them. The smell Ooh. was horrible because the flame went out and the smell went out. And your only crime was being Jew? The only crime because I was Jewish. I didn't do nothing, I was a kid. Yeah. What gave you hope, like to get through every day? To get day? through, I talked to God. You talked to God, okay. I talked to my daddy To See, <laughs> people don't understand how important it is to have a true, genuine relationship with God. Like people don't, people don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying you got to have a relationship with God just to go into prayer with him. But, bro, prayer works. You feel me? Prayer simply works. She talked to God. She she had hope. It gave her hope that she was going to get through it. Now she's 94 years old, bro. 94 years old to live to tell the story of how or what, uh, what she went through. 94 years old. God definitely had favor and mercy and grace over her life. Because 94 years old to be able to tell the story of what she went through during the Holocaust. Something that a lot of us don't even really talk about. You know what I'm saying? We so stuck on slavery, which honestly, that was also a terrible tragedy that happened to, to black people. You know what I'm saying? But we also got other things that happened to different cultures and different races that we just ignore. You feel me? Like, I truly believe that because I'm black, I don't. I believe that I'm not the only or my race is not the only race that has been through hell. I am aware that it's other races, other cultures, other uh, and this is, and this is Wow. Wow. That did not come out right. <laughs> There's other races and cultures that has literally been through the same or even worse than what my people that are my color have been through. You see what I'm saying? But I love the fact that she talked to God. Like, that's the most important thing is to talk to God, bro. Talk to God. Anything you go through, talk to him. The Bible tells us, lay all your burdens onto me and I shall give you rest. That's what the word of God say. That's why some of y'all are lost. Some of y'all are confused. Some of y'all don't know what to do with y'all life because y'all don't know God, bro. To my mommy, talk to God. Not once and not twice I wanted to kill myself. Going to the bob wires and get burnt. There was barbed wires all around. We couldn't run away because okay. barbed wires. And a Nazi was on a post on a top in a little boot. Yeah. And they were watching. <laughs> but, but if you don't want to live, you just go to the barbed wire and you got killed. You got burned. You, did you see that happen? Yeah, I saw it happen. Plenty of people. They didn't want to live no more like that, so they went to the barbed wire and they got killed. 
Me too. I had my mind put up for that, but God said, no, not your time. Is there um, a specific, in those two years, a specific story that really sticks out in your head that you can share? Yeah, hunger. Hunger. Not knowing when you're getting the next meal or, or what? Hung I couldn't eat that meal. It was garbage. What they, would they feed you? Like for pigs. Like just grain or what? No, they came with trucks and they poured them on the ground. Beets, those beets. Oh, yeah. And we cut them up with the sand, with everything, went into castles. Oh, uh, yeah. And they cooked that and they, they, they served that for the people. Once a day, we got served. Once a day. One meal a day. One meal a day. What about water? In the morning, water. In the morning, we had chicory coffee. You know what chicory means? Mm, imitation coffee. So imi imitation had. coffee and beets, and then you had to work all day. Yeah. So you were skinny. How much did you weigh? Like a rail. Who weighed themselves? Who had the scale? But everyone looked like this. Huh? Everyone. So when you're in it, you have no idea you'll be freed. You no. had no idea. No. So you're like, this is the rest of my life. That's right. And I figured if this is the rest of my life, and if I get tired, I kill myself. Did you make friends there with other, uh, with other, other prisoners? Yeah, with other halflings, they call them. Half what? Halflings, halfling. That, that's in German, okay. partner. I made a friend that I made, that we became like Lager sisters. Oh, you know, she was my age, so we became like two sisters. And we were on the dead march together too. I was on the dead march. The from dead Auschwitz march. to Bergen Belsen. When the Russians were coming closer in January. 1945, 1945 right? 45, right? They were coming closer to liberate Auschwitz. So they took mm -hmm. us. I was the last one in camp because I worked mm -hmm. in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So they took us on a dead march mm. to march. They gave us one blanket and then the mumu dress and the wooden shoes and we were marching mm -hmm. out of Auschwitz because Auschwitz is close to be occupied by the Russian. So they didn't want us to be freed. And wherever was room, they took us to Großrosen. They took us to Buchenwald. There was no room for women. Mm -hmm. Only for men, they were half dead. The man was f like flies, they're dying. They couldn't take it. Woman is stronger than men. I saw that the first time in my life. They're stronger physically, mentally? Yeah. The man sat down, they couldn't walk anymore. They sat down and they got right away a bullet. So more women su survived that more than men. More women, Interesting. Right. So when the Soviets were coming, you looked at them as the liberators, or you didn't know at that time? We were chased out. We never met the Russians. Okay. But they had their own bad history with the Jews, too. Who? The Russians? The Russians, yeah. They had the pogroms. I don't know, pogroms. because I wasn't there. Yeah. But one thing they did, they raped a lot of girls, too. That they survived, but... So you do this death march, you get to Bergenhof, right? Yeah, I did the death march and we tried a few camps and it was no room for women, only for a few men. Okay. So they took off the men and we were still marching. I remember in one city we had Red Cross was there. Okay. And they wanted to give us a little food. We were starving. Yeah. So they said, you're not allowed to talk one with one talk. You're not allowed to ask anything. You're not allowed to open your mouth. So they gave us a little coffee with I don't remember what else. Uh -huh. And that was when we were marching. And from there we marched again. And they didn't have room in this camp and that camp for women. So what did they do, the Nazis? They put us on cattle trains, 
open wagon, cattle trains, and from there we went to Bergen-Belsen on the train, on the cattle train. Hmm. I don't remember what city we started, and we went uh, open wagons. It was winter. We were like penguins hugging together because we were cold, <laughs> no clothes. And we wind up in Bergen-Belsen. Bergen-Belsen, I came off from the train, from the wagon. Mm -hmm. And when we got into camp, it was a typhus outbreak. Mm. That was a camp full with typhus. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, but I had a girlfriend that I made as a sister in camp. And I said to her, we're going to wash up. And we're going to go and see who's working in the kitchen. Yeah. We worked in the kitchen. So we did that. Next day we went and washed up and we went into the kitchen. You were not allowed to go and you could get a beating. So I said, we get a beating, we get a beating. Mm -hmm. There was the SS, the old SS that we worked for in Auschwitz, uh -huh. in Birkenau. <gasps> and he says to me, oh my God, the Klein and Lucy, the little Lucy is here. Oh, he recognized God. me. Yeah. I said, Herr Oberschafferer, that means, you know, big person. I said, can I come back to work? Please, please. I don't want to sit. There was no bunks, only on the floor. Yeah. Nothing. Just on the floor, not even wooden floor. Cement. So I said to my girlfriend, we're going to die here. Mm -hmm. We've survived all that, and we're going to die here because there is no bed, there is no, there is typhus outbreak. So we wind up working in the kitchen a little until I got sick typhus myself. Oh, Bro, I really, I real life could not imagine going through what she went through. You feel me? I couldn't. I couldn't imagine going through that. You know, like, really being, even, even though like my race has been through slavery. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty like I said, it's other it's other races and cultures that's been through worse or even the same. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't actually I don't want to say worse because I don't feel like there is no oh this happened worse than this and this happened worse than this because at the end of the day, bro, a tragedy is a tragedy. You feel me? It, 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 you you may think some people may think slavery was worse than a Holocaust. Some people may think the Holocaust was worse than the slavery. Personally Nothing is worse than worse or better than better. Like, bro, they all tragedies. They both was bad as heck, okay? So I just couldn't see myself going through this, you know what I'm saying? Going through chambers and going through all this different stuff, working, working so hard and being fed like dogs because I'm a certain race or because they have something against this particular group of people that they have to torture this particular group of people for what? I don't know what they're going to accomplish when doing this, but I just couldn't imagine going through this type of pain. And I ain't going to lie, like this generation, I ain't going to lie, we have a bad habit of complaining, 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 complaining. But bro, it's people out here that, that live before us that actually went through so much. And what we're going through now ain't nothing compared to what they were going through. You feel me? Or even the people that lived through slavery, even people that lived through the Holocaust, even the people that lived through certain certain tragedies that happened in life. It's the 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 amount of pain or frustration or whatever that we're going through now is nothing compared to what they went through. And we sit here and complain so much. She said the best thing that happened to her in the beginning of this, she said the best thing that happened to her is being free. And she don't want to take that for granted, like just freedom, having the freedom to to do what she is to do what pleases her. That, that's the most important thing to her, is having that freedom. That's powerful, bro. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the SS officers? Do you remember their faces and yeah. how they looked? I had, uh, they were older because they, they couldn't send them on the front. Yeah. So they sent them to concentration camp to watch the people. So you think these are evil people or brainwashed people or what kind brainwashed. of? Brainwashed. They're just brainwashed. Brainwashed. So any, anybody can become brainwashed? Yeah. So anyone could be an SS officer? Anyone could be an SS. If they're put into fear enough, 
and manipulated brainwashed, enough. Brain, brainwashed. They all were brainwashed. And they did their job. So they thought they were doing the right thing. Sure. Did you feel at this time you knew the war was ending? Because you're getting moved around a lot? No, because we were still with the Nazis. Okay. And then when the war ends, it's just like one day you just, you let free? How does that Sweetheart, work? Sweetheart. I was yeah. sick. Typhus. Yeah. I was in the hospital. Okay. Then we became free. Yeah. And they came, they shook me because I was half dead. Don't die. Don't die. We are free. I didn't pick up my head after a few days. They had to teach me how to walk. I couldn't walk. Because you're so sick. And then once you could they walk... They took me to a hospital yeah. from the floor because I was half dead. They find me half dead, the British, when they how, occupied Berlin, Belgium. What was your actual age then? 16? Yeah. So on the records you were 18, but you were 16. Yeah, right. I would be 16, they would never marry me in Czechoslovakia. Okay. You had to be 18. You so got I married was, right away? I had to, I had no home. You met a man? Nobody to feed me. How'd you meet the man? Through my uncle. Okay. They were together in the army officers. Mm -hmm. And he knew him, he was 20 years old, and uh, just married he me. He was 36. Yeah. That I have a home. Yeah. He was already in business. Mm hmm And he had a home. He never was married. So he was 20 years older. Did so, you get along okay? Yeah, he was an older man. He was very jealous of me. Oh, oh really? You, you were a very attractive young woman, I bet. After, after, after. Not right away, after I came to myself, I guess I was attractive and he was jealous. Yeah. 20 so, years is a lot of year, years in between. So you went from a very horrific situation to another difficult situation. Right, but I had no choice. Yeah. I had nobody to feed me. I wanted to go back to school to finish my school. Okay, did you? I, no. You didn't? Care. I couldn't. Okay. I had nobody to feed me. Nobody to take care of me. But once you got married, did you go back to school or no? No. Okay. I went to work. You went to work. He had a business and I went to the business every single day. Even when I was pregnant with him, I went every day to business. So what was culture like that then in Czechoslovakia? It's 1946 on the streets. The war ends. Is there everyone trying to forget it? No. Is there a lot of tension on the streets with people? No, people, I will or? never forget it in my life. Of course you won't forget it, but I'm saying, was the, what was the feel like? Was, it was a people, normal life. It was normal life. Yeah. Czechoslovakia was then a normal life. I mean, my husband was in the army, he was an officer. He had a store, he had an apartment. He was... Did they accept the Jews then? Yeah. It was like nothing happened. Nothing happened. The war was <laughs> over. How long did you stay there, Czechoslovakia? Czechoslovakia, I stayed from from uh, forty-five till three years. Three years. We went to Israel in nineteen forty-eight. Oh, okay. We closed the store during the night. Mm -hmm. Never went back because the Russian occupied. March into Czechoslovakia. Yeah, yeah. And we took off. We didn't want to become Russian. I had a baby, a two-year-old baby, my son. And we took off. We went from Czechoslovakia to Italy. Mm. We went to Italy, and Italy, you find a Jewish organization. And we went from Italy to Palestine. It was not Israel yet. It was Palestine. Yeah. What, how did you get, you went by boat? By boat. By fair boat was animal used to ship. The British were just starting to go out and the Arabs were running away because they were afraid of the Jews. And after that, we became state of Israel. My okay. husband was in the army officer. Okay. And I had a, I have a, a book a reserve book because I had a child. Mm -hmm. And that's how we started life. How long did you stay in Israel for? 10 years. 
Ten years, we had a hard time. We went Israel. to Israel when Israel was not Israel yet. Yeah. No electricity. We had an Arab. Hot, huh? So hot. hot. No electricity. Yeah. No water. I had to carry water like from here to the other end. <sighs> yeah? If you want to wash clothes, come on. So. It was a hard life, very hard life. Yeah. And then. After a couple of years, when it became Israel, they, we had electricity, we had water in the house. I had an Arab apartment. They had no bathroom, just a hall, no toilet, just a hall on the, on the floor. So with your experiences... I've like, been through a lot in my life. Yeah. N no problem seems like a problem now, right? Thank God, no, I'm an American. If you can, if you I'm free. Can, okay. And, and to me, that means everything, to oh, be free. Yeah. So you came to America. Did you love it I immediately? I loved it immediately, immediately because I had a big family here. Yep. My grandfather's brothers, my grandfather's sisters, and a big family. So I, I became here like their angel. And how has America been to you? Good. 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 I went to work in a factory. Where? In New York. Okay. In Manhattan. What factory? Mm. Buttonholes. So made you made the buttonholes? Buttonholes on uniform for the airline. So when you were at work, in a, yeah. having a manufacturing job, right? You're doing manual labor, and then your coworkers might complain, oh, this is so hard and difficult. You're like, no, I got a, I got a story that's hard. Enough, I had right? to work because I had to make a living and I had to pay my rent. Yeah. My rent was almost $100, $99 a month. And I had... <coughs> Your rent was $100 a month? Yo! $100 a month? Bro, there's no way times back then was this cheap. There's no freaking way. Yo, I I mean, it's it's crazy how much times changed because literally I'm pretty sure back then that was expensive. That right there was expensive back then, like depending on how much minimal wage was, probably like what, four dollars or not even three dollars. I don't know how much minimum wage was back then, but a hundred dollars for rent, bro. Rent is like thirteen hundred for what two bedrooms? Twelve hundred. That's crazy, bro. That is crazy. And I'm pretty sure time is going to continue to evolve. I'm pretty sure in the next 10, 15 years, we go wish we came back to where it was only twelve hundred for rent. I'm pretty sure in the next 10 to 15 years it's gonna be like 2000 for a two-bedroom. <laughs> that junk crazy. Had to work two weeks for that. But it was easy compared to what you've been through, right? Of course. It was of nothing. Of course, nothing. Yeah. America, God bless America. I was free. I was free to, but the subways killed me. The subways? You don't like the subways? No. Not once and not twice a man relieved on himself and me. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the subway like sardines. Yeah. <laughs> I hated the subways. So you've lived in New York? You've lived <laughs> yeah, in Florida? Yeah, I lived in Bronx, in the Bronx. In the Bronx? Wow. Yeah, on Jerome Avenue. And you lived in Florida? And I lived in Florida. Where else? Las Vegas. And you came here because you love gambling or why? No, I don't like to gamble. <laughs> it was a bad I'm not dream. a gambler. Why did you come here to Las Vegas? I, because of my son. Okay. I lost my daughter. I had a beautiful daughter. Mm. She was a young girl. She lost her husband. He was 50. And she was 40. She lost her husband. When she lost her husband, she decided to sell everything out in New York and come to live near me in Florida. Mm -hmm. But God took her. She got sick. We were very close with each other. She got sick and she passed away on me. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, you're very young. And I decided, my, my son decided for me that if I'm right after the funeral, he brought me here to his apartment. Mm -hmm. He lived on, on the strip and talked to me, sat down with me. I was very depressed. Mom, I find the place is gorgeous. It's clean. It's new. You're going to meet people. You're going to mingle. You're not going to be alone in the house. So I thought about it. I said, look, I only have one child left, my son. So I made my decision. I gave up everything there, sold everything out there, and moved down to Las Vegas. What would you have to tell young Americans that haven't gone through, well, really any American hasn't gone through the experiences you went through? What would you have to tell young them? Young American, them they have to be good to their parents. And they have to appreciate America. Yeah. It should never happen to them what happened to me. Yeah. They should be good and appreciate that they're here and they're free. They have freedom. How no in, communism. How in, if someone has only known freedom their whole life, they don't know anything else. They don't appreciate. Right. Like anything. No. You don't it's know. Coming you to don't them. know. No. No. They think it's coming to them. No. No, it's not. But in you your life, it. your freedom went like that in one second, right? It was tough, tough life for me. So I appreciate every day what I got. Great. I thank God every single day. Just keep me here as long as you keep my brains. And you're doing very well. Where Fine. my brains are going, I want to go. Okay. I want to go back to New York. I'm going to be better than New York. You're going to be buried in New York. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're almost 95. I'm next month going to be 95. And you wow. July 15th next month. Oh, July 15th. Happy belated birthday. This video was posted a month ago, but obviously it's August. But happy belated birthday. On my papers, I'm going to be 97. Ha, ah, that's interesting, huh? Yeah. Thank you for listening to my story. No, thank you for sharing, because a uh, lot a lot of survivors don't want to talk about it. A lot of people don't want to talk about it. Yeah. And a lot of people still don't want to hear it. Yeah. So we even. <laughs> they don't want to hear it. Yeah. I know right. a lot of people they don't want to hear it. But a lot of people wanna hear it. I went to a lot of homes to tell my story in schools, in Catholic school, in Jewish schools. Can you imagine I came to a school, to a Catholic school, and the whole ceiling was with planes. The kids made it. Oh. And this was a Catholic school. The six million Jews were made on the roof. Oh, wow. Wow. And made me cry that the kids from the school made those planes to put them on the ceiling for the so six no, million. No, no one should ever forget this No one, this no story. one. Yeah. Now, on Memorial Day, they showed in the movies, on television. I couldn't believe it. What that happened? That they showed the six million people, that they were talking about it. Six candles were lit. For six million. For the six million. So you were glad that they were doing that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything else you want to say, Lucy? Anything else you want you to share? You are a wonderful person. Oh, thank you. And thank you so much. And God bless you. And God nice bless you. to meet you. Nice to meet you, Lucy. And thank and you for speaking. And just be healthy. Up. Okay. And I tell you, you do, this is the biggest, what God should give you health, what you're doing. Okay. To interview me and listen to my story. Thank you, Lucy. God bless you. God bless you. Hugs? Wow. Bro, that work there was, bro, that was amazing, yo. That was amazing. I feel like a lot of people take their, like she said, a lot of people take their freedom for granted. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, like, 
sometimes I do complain a lot. You feel me? I complain a lot because obviously my whole entire life I've been free. You feel me? I never had to go through anything. That's you know that's why so many people they complain so much or they complain about reparations and all these different things. But bro, it's so many other races, cultures that's been through hell just how black people been through it like that's why i say it's not it doesn't just stop it doesn't just stop at black people it doesn't her story was sick bro not sick as in oh my god it was cool no it was sickening because people people actually did this to her she was 14 going through all of this her freedom was snatched away from her in the blink of an eye but yeah, we complain so much on this earth. We complain so much in America. You got people who who talk so down on America. You got Americans who step on the American flag. They they do all these different things to the American flag, and they just don't understand how blessed they are to be in America. You got so many people coming from other countries to come over to America so they can have freedom. But we complain so much about America. We say, oh, America this and America that. And like I said, I'm not a person that's going to sit here and think I'm all perfect, dude. And no, I'm not. I complain too. I complain too. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, after hearing her story, who am I to truly complain about what America is doing right now? Yes, it could be better. But at the end of the day, what she went through, and I'm pretty sure what, any, what everybody else done went through through this tragedy, I don't want to face that. I, I know I can't go through it. I know she was strong to pull through that just having hope and knowing that God was going to bring her out. She's strong for that. Me, I probably, I, I don't know. I, I just couldn't imagine myself going through that type of tragedy. But it, 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 it's good to hear a 94-year-old talk about the Holocaust and her experience in the Holocaust. That was an amazing story, y'all. So y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. It is 1 o'clock in the morning right now. I'm low-key a little tired. So your boy finna go ahead and go night-night. So... Make sure y'all hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the story. This was an amazing, beautiful story from this wonderful, beautiful lady named Lucy. So yeah, shout out to uh, who actually did this. Shout out to Peter Centurillo. I think that's how you say your name, brother. Shout out to you, man, for, you know what I'm saying, allowing her to speak out on what she went through throughout this entire tragedy. So yeah, man, I love y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.